Com and click on the live courses so you can see all upcoming courses and as you probably know they are free for you to watch when they are live just when they are live later if you have one that you had to miss for any reason you can get the on-demand course but when they are live we want you watching here with us it's so fun and you can ask questions all the time so do that okay with that said, before I talk to Kathy, I want you to take a look at a few of her pieces. She has tons of uh, beautiful things, but you want to see some of the ones she brought today. So let's take a look at that. And it's an amazing work. How long have you been doing this, Kathy? Uh, the wire is only about a decade. Wow, only um, about a decade, right? Yeah, just, I started like with tomorrow. beads in high school. Uh, my mom gave me all the stuff I broke as a kid uh -huh. and said, here, I don't know what to do with this. So and Then you said, I do. Yeah, I played with taking all the things apart and figuring out how it had gone together. Mm -hmm. And so I really spent quite a few years playing with beads um, before I attempted all this with wire. And I was actually ready to give it up. I was oh. so frustrated. Uh -huh. uh, round craft wire, uh, plated stuff that uh, by the time I was done working had lost all of its shine. <laughs> and a friend of mine said, well, 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 hang on. Try square wire. Try investing a little bit into your materials. Um, and really, I found out if you don't like the rock before you start, mm -hmm. you're probably not going to like the outcome. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's why. Kathy, when I first met you, I thought you were like, I don't know, 16 years old because uh, you have you. this, you know, sweet voice. Tell me a little bit about your day to day life. Ah, I'm a mom. I have three kids. They are 16 and 7 and 3. So I have the joy of oh, high phase. school and elementary and still at home. I'm also a massage therapist and I do healing session work and classes all over town on all the topics. Um, I actually taught massage therapy for several years also. I'm an artist, a mom, a teacher, and looking for what to add to my life, what would be joyful, what would be fun. Uh -huh. And I just, I like creating beautiful things and sharing with people how they can actually very easily create beauty also. A second ago, we were actually uh, looking at our calendar so we could schedule <laughs> another class uh, before the end of the year with Kathy and I thought my calendar was busy. <laughs> you should see hers. And she has all colors covered, right? Mm -hmm. One for each kid. Oh, yes. You have a very busy life, right? I like it that way. I actually tried to slow down and cut things out for a while, mm -hmm. and I was pretty miserable. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so like me. <laughs> oh, there's a holiday me. there. Everybody's dancing. I'm going, oh, boy, one day without <laughs> working. <laughs> Kathy, when you, you started with massage, correct? That was your main profession um, or did you start first with wire? Hmm. I was doing wire work a long time before I got into the healing arts. Okay, because um, you started as a kid, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually it was my desire for personal recovery. Um, I had had car accident injuries and so I actually lost a lot of the use of my arms oh. and movement in my shoulders. And so I, I got seeking all those alternative modalities so that I could function again. Uh -huh. And in the art realm, was always wire or do you play with nope. other materials? Uh, it's clay. I actually was an art major a long, long time ago. <laughs> uh, I did a lot of ceramics all through high school and okay. thought I was going to teach ceramics oh, <laughs> when I grew that. up. But I guess I never grew up. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't have to do that. <laughs> so what got you really into the wire? Why, uh, for example, with ceramics, it's, it's, it's a very... It's much more portable. Yes. yes. Okay. It's the mess involved. Um, I tried several times to set up the clay at my house, and then the transporting it somewhere to be fired. Things were getting broken, and it just... <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The reality of having children and yeah. a house. Uh -huh. And if I'm going to work in the kitchen during the daytime, I need to be able to quick pack it up and put it back in the cupboard so we can have which, dinner. Which a lot of us do. Yeah. Have. Even, even some of us that don't uh, have kids, they do have, sometimes, sometimes they live in a small space, for example. Yeah, yeah. I get what you say because I, I love clay. Mm -hmm. I love the tactile uh, feeling of clay. But it's the same. For, for me, it was always two things. The mass around I, I do care for that. You know, I, I want to be able to be somewhat organized. So a lot of, of 
you know, types of crafts that require a lot of mass, I don't go for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second one was the frustration sometimes into firing a piece yeah. and, oh, it exploded. Yeah, some of my very last pieces I did with standard clay, uh -huh. um, one of someone else's thing blew up in the kiln and shattered all of my stuff. Oh. And I was doing really dainty uh, miniature kind of things that, you know, 20 hours on something five <laughs> inches tall. And to have someone else's mm -hmm. massive lumpy thing explode, explode yeah. and just smash <laughs> a week's and worth the of, amount of yeah. hours that you put. Like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> It, it clay is a wonderful medium, don't oh, yes. get me wrong, yes, but I yes, I get that. Now, so then you started with wire. Did you always go for jewelry making? How were your experiences hmm. in the process? Yeah. Did you try, um, try sculptures at all with wire? I'm starting to now use wire armature with my polymer clay. Mm -hmm. um, I make dragons. My website is oh, Kathy's cool. Dragons because um, in high school I got so much criticism about people's opinions on faces and how people are supposed to be shaped. Uh -huh. Everyone has an opinion about if your ears are too high or too low or whatever. So I started making dragons. So um, you can do your own way. <laughs> right. You know, it doesn't like, matter what people are saying. <laughs> if you do five toes or four yeah. or you know where how you attach things if they have wings or horns or not. Um, so yes, I've uh, used my wire to help with the armature for the structure of the mm -hmm. polymer clay. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're playing right now with creating another class yep. and incorporating the polymer clay and the wire to make earrings. Yeah, so, it's going to be super fun. Yes. Yeah, you have to be tuned because we'll have that page up really soon. Now, you like rocks a lot. Locally, I, I know you give some classes mm -hmm. in a rock shop, right? Yes. Uh, tell me about the rocks. How do you choose them? Any any uh, goals? Well, I was a long time ago just aesthetically looking at them, uh, just for their colors. Um, but as I have worked with them over the years, I've I've gotten a sense for how they feel together, and you know if they're going to be good friends or if they're going to argue the whole time. And <laughs> I have found actually that if you force a piece together, it's likely to pop apart. Um, you have more and more trouble creating it um, versus if you take a minute, maybe even a couple days, I often uh, have the rocks in my pocket for a week or so before I sit down and wrap them mm -hmm. um, so that I've really had a chance to get to know them. And, and, and the energy, <laughs> right? You do yeah. believe in that side and mm -hmm. me too. I think they, yeah, everything is energy. Now, are there some types of rocks that you like to work more with, or uh, do you have um, your favorites? I, I used Labradorite uh, for its properties as a heart balancing, heart clearing kind of a thing for mm -hmm. a long time. I carried Labradorite with me all the time so that I could handle so we going can out in public. Give a close up. Um, where do you have it? any here? Yes, there's one. Oh, it's right here. This one is a Labradorite. And maybe I will bring it this way for you. There. This one has Labradorite and Moldavite and a little man-made CZ on top. Um, it's gorgeous. Yeah. I actually had a lot of uh, trouble with anxiety and mm -hmm. panic attacks for a while. And I had a a lot of trouble going out in public. Uh -huh. um, and so Labradorite was the one that I used to oh, help really? adjust my own frequency so that I could I wish get I knew out that. there. I don't have one <laughs> single of those. <laughs> um, and at the moment, I'm actually intentionally working my th way through a lot of the different rocks. Um, so on my calendar this week is hematite. I'm working with hematite to get to know it better, what it helps me with, how I feel when I'm carrying it, when I'm wearing it. I heard it. once the hematite yeah. actually uh, helps you attract wealth. There are a lot so. of different books and resources yeah. out there, but um, it's actually, I want to have my experience mm -hmm. with it yeah. and get to know it. How so do you just I carry feel. around? Yeah, I have hematite nah, Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's just something that I'm doing. Uh -huh. So the labradorite you like because of the properties of the stone in mm -hmm. itself. Oh, and it's a lovely it's easy to green work. rock. Well, yes, And it, it has lots of fire in it and is really so beautiful. So do you go rock hounding or do you always I buy I have done a little bit of that and I got to realize it's a lot of work. <laughs> um, <laughs> and appreciate that other people go dig it up. Um, there are a couple You'd I went on. you them already polished. I spent or? hours and hours digging and didn't find anything Mm -hmm. of, you know, the specimen we were after. Yeah. I'm like, okay, 
I would rather spend my time wrapping Creating it, it yes, wrapping, yeah. making the piece that can be worn. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have gone and done the uh, class for cutting and polishing, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed that quite a lot. Yep. However, this is still yeah, I'll come it's... back around to that later. Um, I was very interested in silversmithing, uh -huh. but then I got to looking at the materials and, and the tools. And yeah, I'm with little kids at home. Yeah. I'm not prepared to yeah. bring all Especially that. Especially because there's acid involved. Uh -huh. Now, stones, when you buy them already polished, they, they tend not to be very cheap, right? They, can There's be very a wide expensive. range, yes. yes. Uh, so when you go shop for the stones, do you already have a piece in mind that I say, I'm going to make this Sometimes. type of this format or not? You just Sometimes go, you I talk do. to me and um, I'll get you. I do a lot of commissioned work. So uh, people bring me their piece that's uh, something you know, special to them and say, you know, I want this bring wrapped with silver with or gold and I want it to look like this. Um, and then I will go look for the compliments, the things that will go nicely with that. However, it changes, right? <laughs> so I am in the habit now of when I get rocks, I immediately go home and I put a little sticky on them with how much I paid for it. Um, so that if it takes me months and months to get around to that mm -hmm. rock again, I can just look at and, it, and there's the name of it, there's how much I paid for it. Uh, the only trouble with that, there have been a couple that the price of that material drastically increased. Oh. And so you do need to keep an eye on... How much it is. Uh, like in China, they decide to uh, build a dam and flood hmm. an area. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was Petersite recently that that was the primary source of Petersite on the planet. Oh. And <laughs> so if you have Petersite, the price Keep of it, it. <laughs> is going up, yes. Yeah. Um, the same thing with your wire. Yes, mark how much you spent on it when you got it, but you've also got to keep an eye on I, a on couple years itself. ago, I sold some stuff made in gold. And I'm like, yes, awesome. <laughs> and then I couldn't buy more material uh -huh. because I had not looked and if, at if the And if you're doing market. this as a business, this is crucial to, to be able to every now and then check mm -hmm. a little bit because Mark, I remember rhodochrosite, uh, and I don't know if I'm saying that uh, right there. in English, but uh, it comes from Argentina. It's a gorgeous pink stone, mm -hmm. also known to attract wealth. And, but all the mines were bought because it's also used for military purposes. So what was cheap mm -hmm. became extremely expensive. So we have to be aware of what's going on out there yeah. right before we decide. But I do like your tip about having the name of the stone and the price in the back because sometimes it takes us months, if not years, to use yeah. a piece. And that happened. You know, I, I'm doing a course on how to sew. Oh. And there is this lady that she's making this awesome outfit with a piece that she bought in Scotland 49 years oh, ago. Oh, wow. So how long? Yeah. <laughs> well, if this was a stone, it would be nice to know how much you paid so you can make an educated decision mm -hmm. on how much you're going to, to sell it for, right? Yes. Now, you said at the beginning that you were almost giving up on wire wrapping oh, when yes. somebody told you, mm -hmm. uh, pay attention to the material you're using. So... Let's talk a little bit more about that. It's not any wire. It's not uh, you. You don't use mostly wire that you can buy in a craft store, for example. Uh, nope. I use square copper and half round copper. Um, I'm quite fond of the copper, uh, the warm look of it, but also as it ages, how uh, it gets a patina on it. Um, that is. You know, you can order it and have it, mm -hmm. um, and that's the other. It's, it's it's accessible. I also like the um, the weight of the copper um, and the way it responds to your tools. Actually, um, is very similar to your softer gold and silver. So if you will practice with dead soft copper and get good, uh, not marring your wire with your tools while you're using copper, the transition over to silver and gold is actually. Pretty easy to make. Uh, for me, it was just an emotional kind of a thing oh, yeah. to know that I was working with gold and 
<laughs> I'm waiting. We go. They cannot mess up this right? one. <laughs> but even that, uh, my other training, mm -hmm. I did a whole bunch of tapping mm -hmm. for the stress of using the nicer materials. And <laughs> I know the feeling. I do some lost wax casting, uh -huh. and every time I'm, I'm shaving the, the wax, I'm actually thinking, oh my gosh, this in silver is going to cost a fortune. Uh, I don't like small pieces. Right. So yeah, I know. We have some people watching. Joyce, for example, she's saying, hello, Holland in the house, Yay. and seeing bling bling, yummy. Yes, <laughs> we love some bling. And Beverly uh, from Edmonton is also saying yes. And guys, if you have any questions, uh, I'll try to find it here, and then... Uh, love the bracelet with the tree. Do you mind picking that up? Uh, this is one of the upcoming ones yeah, that we have in our week. course next week. Gorgeous. And before that, she did the tree in, in a pendant that we have in the back as well. There's a couple also of awesome. them on There's, the yeah, table. You, and, the, I actually um, went home that day and made here, myself I've one got too. It. Where'd you go? Yes. <laughs> this we, one was covering the first one, right? Yep. Yeah. The pendant class we did yes. included cab tree that was awesome lots of fun yeah, yeah. and the the one in the back the the one with the stones oh yes it's a gorgeous so Over i there. did one similar the to, similar because it didn't get to be anywhere close that <laughs> one. but it's a gorgeous one well and i really love uh including the written instructions the step by step mm -hmm. with the photographs yes. um i've had several people say well it takes so much time why don't you give it up and i'm like ah. no, it's worth doing. <laughs> i like having the written words as well as the audio and the visual mm -hmm. so that if my brain didn't understand it over here maybe I can go look over there and between the three of them <laughs> figure it out. Before we talk a little bit about the business side because you created multiple revenue channels coming from a hobby. Mm -hmm. For how long were you doing wire wrapping before you, you sold your first one for example? Oh, Consider um, yourself professional. Huh. Well, I gave a whole bunch away at first, but then uh, people started seeing what I was wearing. And I'd say, oh, thank you. And then go, did you make that? I'm like, yes. And they're like, can I buy it off you? <laughs> or can I have a duplicate of that? Um, so it was probably a month and a half after my friend got me to try different materials that a neighbor wanted what I had on. Nice. Um, I'm like, oh. Nothing like the neighbors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so over the years, I have, I have quite a treasure chest mm -hmm. of things that I've kept for myself. Um, my husband a long time ago said, make what you like. Mm -hmm. And so if nobody ever buys it, you You'll were. be happy, yeah. <laughs> um, but there's something in that, that mm -hmm. if you enjoy it and if you would wear it, people see it. Yes. And they're drawn and you, you to You have it. to be mm -hmm. proud of what you make, right? Because I think we all have all those scripts. In my head, for example, there's a whole village here. And when I create something, the critics come out very easily. Oh, yeah. Right? And I actually had to educate myself to start liking what I create. And today, 90% of what I wear, I made it. Mm -hmm. Because I, for me, it's a training that everything I make is important. It matters and creates beauty in the world. So I think it's important to be wearing your pieces all the time, mm -hmm. right? It's a process. Well, so you you sold your first one. Then what was your next step? Um, well, I got invited. Uh, someone was doing a belly dancing uh, recital. You know, they'd been having a class, and mm -hmm. so they were getting ready to have their event. And she was looking around for vendors and had seen somebody wearing something of mine and said, would you come have a table? Um, and that was really scary for me, actually. <laughs> um, I, I did not want to sit there with my work and receive the judgment <laughs> from people. Um, but there again, I did a whole bunch of tapping <laughs> and breathing and got myself out there. Um, and then I have, over the years, gotten to where there are a couple a year that I just plan on it. I'm always uh, in the background of going places and taking children all over the place. I have time. I have my little toolbox. I make, I make, I make, I make. You're always demonstrating mm -hmm. why you're also yep. selling, correct? Yep. Yeah. And actually, I love the strength mm -hmm. that I'm building in my hands. Uh, it doesn't start out that way. You do build up the stamina for using the pliers and bending the wire, but then it gets to be something that I feel is good exercise. For my do you, hands do and you my practice arms. every day wire wrapping? Um, 
Weekly, definitely. Weekly. Okay. But I'm also a massage therapist, and I'm also so you're working. Yeah. Your, you're, you're good with the arms. <laughs> I, I can. So. I already have. They call the grandma thing. I already. Uh, I need more. But you know, it's a good. It's a good thing. How often do you create a new piece? Ooh, um, a lot of these have come about because someone asked. I had a lady that over and over again kept saying, I want to be able to swap my rock out. I want to be able to swap my rock out. And I kept saying, if you bend the wire to get the rock out, it will break. You cannot keep changing the rock. And she said, oh, you'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept telling her, no, no, no. Um, and then I woke up one morning and I had the solution, which was this little basket. Um, so that she can swap out her little hearts. She said she had a collection of hearts. And so I came wow, up with this cool. basket. Can yeah. you open once again? So um, and it you? was, it was oh. because someone asked a question. And, and then the weight of the rock in there uh, helps it stay closed. That's fantastic. So yes, all by itself. We need to teach you that. And, and yeah, and then she had one and five other people wanted one. And the same thing with the tree pendant. Uh, someone said, I have a really special rock and it's from someone who loved trees. And how could you uh, frame this, cage this in such a way that it shows off the rock, but I also get to honor uh, their love of trees. Hmm. Um, and I'm like, well, let me think about it. <laughs> and I had seen the open hoop tree instructions, um, and I knew there was a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, my brain figured it out for me. <laughs> um, and it was actually the same thing over here with the spider web. Um, that was a hit on oh, our first yeah, course. Yeah. That um, I was wondering, how would I do this? Mm -hmm. And I love my brain for that. <laughs> yeah. You know, the other day I heard the most amazing thing uh, from another instructor here at Curious Mondo, Jody, because I, I love a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I've been a consultant most of my life, so I actually am trained to solve problems. And I'm proud of that. I'm a problem solver. And she said, well, that's exactly what we are. We are problem solvers. I chose glass to oh. solve problems mm -hmm. with. So I would say, you chose wire to mm -hmm. solve problems with. And, and we, we have to understand that art has so many angles when we are creating, and one of them is solving an issue, right? Mm -hmm. How do I make this this way? Yes. And then the whole process starts. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit before uh, this interview is over about the business side. So okay. specifically with WIRE, how are the different ways you make money with WIRE? Um, well, part of that is letting people know that they can buy my yes. stuff. And that's a big thing, right? A lot <laughs> yes. of people are afraid to say um, that. Um, I have a Facebook page that's my business stuff and I have a private Facebook page. So tell me and, the name of your business page. Uh, it's Kathy's Dragons on Kathy's. Facebook. And I, that was one of the first things I realized that I had to separate business related stuff, promoting my classes, saying, hey, you know, I'm going to be at this event and my inventory will be for sale um, from, you know, pictures of my kids and where we went last week for a trip. Because if people have to dig through your personal life <laughs> to find your sale items, they may miss it. Or the other way around, if they're just interested in you as a friend and family member and they keep getting all this stuff about upcoming classes and, oh, I'm going to be at this event and I'm having a sale and, you know, August special, they go, ah, I don't want to follow you. And so you actually lose following both ways by mm -hmm. having it collapsed. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, the fun of having a business page and a website for my business. How often do you update the business page? My, I try to keep up with my Facebook one every couple days. Mm -hmm. On there, saying something, sharing something um, about where I am, what I'm doing, what I'm working on, um, and inviting people to Curious Mondo, to the library of what Courses I've already done. Have. Yeah. Um, you also give I'm, local classes, I right? I do. Uh, there are some coming up this weekend. Um, and I took that opportunity. So that's going to be a very yeah. busy week. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love the live teaching and, you know, right there with people. Um, however, it's not necessarily a good use of my time to sit with three people and do exactly the same stuff that I could do here and reached out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I've had the feedback from people in the live class. I wish I had a recording of that. I'm like, 
That's wow. one thing people don't get. I love life classes. Uh -huh. Like I told you, I'm taking one right now. So I love life classes. You, you, it's a connection, it's an energy thing. But the fact is that you leave and really half an hour later, you forgot half of it. And you don't have a way to revisit the life class, right? So yeah, yeah. that's crucial. Now, talking a little bit about prices. So mm -hmm. of course you're using stones that have yep. the price of their own and they shift. Uh, do you have a formula? How do you I make a price? I do. I have a little chart for myself and it's got, uh, you know, one side of it is the different wires. So copper, brass, stainless steel are all about the same cost for the material itself, uh, silver, gold. And if I blended, there are some pieces that have you know one strand of silver in with the copper or something. And then across the other side of my chart is was it like a simple twist fast thing? Was it a basic cage? Was it uh, one of these more complex things, or you know, so I have my little chart for which material that I use and which project style was it, um, and that's a base price mm -hmm. that I have to start <laughs> and then add in the cost of my stones. Um, and so, yeah, for something that had a labradorite and moldavite, that was a forty-dollar rock and a twenty-dollar rock. Mm -hmm. on top of the cost of the silver. Um, and so, yes, uh, there's a starting place, and that's the one that screwed me up with the sale of the gold a couple mm -hmm. of years ago because I went to my chart instead of checking in with, oh, wait a second. <laughs> Let me see the market for gold today. Yes, yeah. the current market. Um, so I'm actually now in the habit of regularly updating my little chart that and I keep a year on it <laughs> and so I have one in my purse so yeah. that when people say hey could you wrap this for me how much would it be I don't just like say a number and then go home and find oh yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm going gonna to lose give money them here. right yeah. um, so I can look it up and say okay you want copper silver gold or you want just a plain basic, or do you want something more swirly decorative? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to incorporate other stones with this and have the honest conversation about what's it going to take? When you get a commission, like yeah. in this case that you're just mentioning, uh, so you're going to get an idea, and I, an idea is an abstract thing, uh -huh. thought, right? So they say, I want, I don't know, with trees or whatever. Uh, how, how is your approach? Do you work until they're totally satisfied? Do you say, I'm going to try this if you don't like this happen? Because I, I know how people can be. So. Well, I try to get very clear about that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, if they have a picture of something to show me, if they have, I really like this, do that, and it's nearly the same size and shape, I will sit down and do my best. I really don't like that kind of thing. <laughs> um, and the other way, if they just have loose rocks and they say, you're an artist, I trust you, like, okay, that's, that's mm -hmm. so much easier for me to take on. And I will do, like, start it and then get mm -hmm. back to them. Here's a picture of the work in progress. What yes. do you think? Um, but with the understanding that if I'm using the material on this, even if you snip it apart later, the material was used. Um, so... If you want it wrapped again, it's a new wrapping. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and so actually, and that needs to be clear. Yeah, from yeah, right? right at the start. And for classes, I often tell people I'm providing the materials so that you don't use your favorite rock, um, because if you're not happy with the way the, you know, what you created in class went, you will leave it because having that made piece for you to look at later is actually valuable. It. Uh, is a reference point for you. Um, I didn't bring it today, but I have something that I made years and years ago that the, the plating was all worn off by the time I was finished. And it's kind of a dull looking lump of a thing. I liked the swirls that I had figured out, but... Yeah, not what you want. And I keep that in my toolbox because it reminds me of where I started and what I was doing and where I could have stopped. I could very easily have given it up at that point and I had skill and ability and talent with beads. I could have gone back to beads and clay and mm -hmm. written off the wire. <laughs> <laughs> do you like taking commissions? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's actually some of the most fun uh, to know who I am creating for um, because of the energy of even you know their first name 
especially if they've just said, I need a birthday present for this person. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on for them. I have no idea what they require. I can go to my assortment of rocks and feel for which of these would like to contribute to this person's life right now. And That's cool. it's really beautiful uh, to then later look up the properties of that stone and have them find out, oh, yeah, that is exactly what's happening <laughs> and so what cool. I required right now. Mm -hmm. I, I like your approach. And, you know, the, the business side as well, because as artists, many times we think, no, I like to create. I don't like to deal with this money thing. But, you know, money is mm -hmm. what makes it flow. So I like that you... Put oh, rules in the process. that's why I've continued with the money thing, uh -huh. uh, was so that I could keep buying new materials. Yes. And frequently when I'm out at an event with my stuff on the table, I will put up a sign that says, please buy this inventory because I want to make more stuff. I have all these ideas. Mm -hmm. It's it's really obnoxious sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> How many ideas? You need? Right. Yes. yes. I know. I'm like, oh, and I could do that. Oh, and then mm -hmm. I'm like, shh, go to sleep. Um, <laughs> And, and it's fun to have that conversation with people coming by to see my work that I'm not just mass producing this because uh, I'm making stuff to sell. I'm making things because the creative energy was there and you know I brought it into the world and I have more waiting. <laughs> and yes, I do have quite a bit of an investment in all of my materials. But that's what I started using it for, was that I would make a sale, and then I'd use that money to buy more materials, and then I'd make a sale, and I'd use that money to the, buy The money will nicer allow materials. you always to go for better products, because, yeah. you know, even a crystal, it needs to be a real crystal. Yeah. So you want always to be improving what you're using. So it that's makes a win-win win for yep. whoever wears that. <laughs> That, that has been awesome. Uh, let's give a close up on those bracelets. So like I said, she will be again here with us next week. Uh, if you want to watch live, you just need to register at Curious Mondo. And we are going to make a whole series of bracelets, right? Oh, yes. Quite a few of them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we don't do one project thing no. here. There's a ton. and Three full days. Three full days, some only with wires, some with stones, some are with beads. Mm -hmm. uh, I, for one, love beads. I love beading mm -hmm. of all types. So we are going to cover, do you know how many projects we have? I think it might be 11. 11 I think it projects says six. in three days? I think it says six on the page. Yeah. And then when I sat down to write it up, and figure out the project uh -huh. kits. Like, oh, but you know, this variation and this variation, and we're gonna be talking about mm -hmm. how you can take this piece of instruction from over here and this part and make something else. And yeah. Yeah. Curious Mondo is not the place for people that want <laughs> a how to in two minutes and get done with that. We go in depth and we show you every single angle just in this interview. Uh, you not only got to know Kathy better, but you, you got some glimpses on how she runs the business. She has a successful business. She has an extremely busy life, but she still finds time to create, right? To create beautiful things, to bring more beauty in this world. And you know, as well as I do, that we want more beautiful, positive things out there in your hands. Your hands can create those. So if you're interested in wire wrapping, go to uh, register for the course. It is free for you to watch. We'll be here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week. Yes, we will stop for a brief second to see the eclipse if you're living in a place where the eclipse is coming. But, you know, we are going to have at least nine hours of pure content for you and a lot of fun, of course, yes. and even some drawings in the process. So I appreciate a lot you having spent some of your time today with us. I hope you enjoyed this interview. And I hope we got you excited to try more wire wrapping. Maybe you're already a professional and you got some inspiration here that you can try. Go do that and I'll see you back at CuriousMondo.com next week with Kathy Hacking. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Bye-bye, Facebook friends. <laughs>